live from Utah's first TV station, ABC4 News celebrates 75 years. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. I'm Courtney Johns. And I'm Emily Flores. Now to the Utah mom accused of killing her husband and then writing a children's book about grief. Prosecutors say she wrote a letter to her family telling them to lie about what happened. And today, for the first time, we are hearing from her family. ABC's Matt Gutman has that story. This morning, the family of Corey Richens, accused of fatally poisoning her husband, Eric Richens, and then writing a children's book about grief. I just wanted some story to read to my kids. I couldn't find anything that really, you know, suited them or helped them find comfort and peace. Speaking publicly for the first time. We know Corey's innocent and all that's going to come out in court. And I think that's going to shock people. Days ago, while searching her cell, guards opening this letter in which prosecutors allege Corey attempted to coach family and friends into giving false testimony on the stand. But Corey's attorney says the letter was marked attorney-client privilege and should never have been opened in the first place. Her brother DJ accusing the jail of misadministering her medication to get her out of the cell. And you say that they have messed up her medication six Times? Six times. One time is an accident. Two times is incompetence. Six times is, looks like it's on purpose. Corey Richens and her husband had three boys, a seemingly perfect life near idyllic Park City, Utah. They were generous and spent lavishly. But prosecutors say there were cracks in the relationship. Both sides allege infidelity. And before Eric died, he changed his life insurance beneficiary from Corey to his sister. Corey's family says Eric used drugs and possibly overdosed. The prosecutors say it was Corey who slipped Eric a deadly dose of fentanyl in a Moscow Mule cocktail. They also say she siphoned hundreds of thousands of dollars from Eric. When I got the news that Eric had died, I broke down into tears. He was a good guy. I mean, he lived life to the extreme and, you know, eventually it got him. But it's my sister. I knew Eric. She didn't do this. In the hours we spent with DJ this week, he painted a very different picture of his sister. Her and the boys would go to church every Sunday. What is she like as a mom? She's a great mom. Uh, those are the busiest boys you'll ever meet, whether it be soccer, baseball. There's always something. So she's juggling flipping houses, which is a lot of work. That's just a lot of work. Corey Rich and siblings say that just before Eric's death, the couple was doing well. At the time he died, I thought they were probably in the best place they've ever been. Corey told the police that he didn't use drugs to protect his image. Eric's family disputes that. He was a person who uh, took very good care of his health. And uh, so to try to cast the, the, the light on him that we've seen recently is really troubling. It's really, um, it's sad. One thing both sides agree upon is that they miss Eric. Now we reached out to the jail and prosecutors for comment about that jailhouse letter they found and how they found it. Both said they couldn't comment. Corey Richens' attorney telling us there's very little hard evidence in this case. Nothing to show that Corey ever gave her husband fentanyl or even ever purchased it in the first place. Back up in ABC News, San Francisco.